Hello class, this is the lecture for 4-6 from the Forrester textbook, Arc Trig Functions in Chains. Now, you might like to tie them up in chains and throw them into the deepest, darkest part of the ocean, but what we're talking about is running them all together. And it's not as bad as it sounds. What I would like to do is I've got a bit of a data dump for you where I'm just gonna throw all the facts at you and walk you through the section like the book does, but I would highly suggest not even taking notes on this part. So you're watching this, it's at home, you're in your jammies, watching it on the iPad, and you say, I've gotta take all the meticulous notes about this, no. What you should do is you should watch the first little bit, and then when I say, oh, and I'll make it spin on the screen to pay attention to that part, that's when you come in and you scribble furiously, okay? So just let it wash over you, it's an ocean of mathematical love, and you're just at the shore getting the sand between your toes. Run with it, okay? So, what we've got to do is we've got to know where all the different inverses are taking us, okay? Where all the different arc trig functions are going. Now, obviously, we want to use that first quadrant for everybody. Everybody's positive in the first quadrant. It's the quadrant to be for positive numbers. The question is, where are we gonna put those negative numbers? Where are we gonna go and find our negative numbers? And some of them are gonna be in the second quadrant, but that's not gonna work for everybody because some trig functions are still positive in the second quadrant. So that's not gonna help us cover the whole gamut. We wanna get all the positives and all the negatives, and first and second will work for some, but not for others. So what's connected to the first quadrant? Well, it's the fourth quadrant. That fourth quadrant is gonna be where we're gonna go to get the other stuff. So it's gonna be kinda tricky you're gonna to need to think of the graph of these trig functions and the unit circle at the same time. So get your multitasking brain on, okay? Let's try to make a graph that looks good for these arc trig functions. Like I said, don't try to catch all of this. There's a lot here, there's a lot of data. We'll have a big summary at the end of the six trig functions that'll be way better than trying to nitpick over all the stuff, okay? So first of all, we're talking about arc sine. We want to look at the unit circle and we want to cover all the y's of the unit circle. So if we do first and second, <clears throat> not gonna work. We've got the first quadrant with its positive and we've got the second quadrant with its positive. Not gonna work, not gonna work. Where can we go to get all the positive and all the negative y values on the unit circle in one convenient package, first and fourth. It's the right half of the unit circle. That's where we're gonna get all these cool values in one spot. And as you can see from the graph over there, we've got everything nice and smoothly connected. Now you gotta keep with the radians. I hope you're keeping up on your radian stuff here. This is gonna be all radians all the time by next chapter. So. It may be this chapter. You need, to, you need to get your radian game on. So we're talking about from uh, negative pi over two to positive pi over two, from negative one to one, just like you would expect from a little slice of a sine wave, we've just made the inverse of it. We've made the, the undo version of it, okay? Next up, we've got arc cosine. Now, inverse cosine is gonna work first and second. Why? You should be able to articulate a why Inverse cosine is about x values on the unit circle. On the unit circle, first and second does cover all the positives and all the negatives. So that works. We wouldn't want to go to the fourth. That wouldn't get, that would still just be positive x values on the unit circle. So this is going to do it for us. Again, the domain, not the range, not that thing, don't, you know, regular cosine function flipped on its side. The domain is negative one to one, and the range is zero to pi. So you can see that on the graph up there. This is, this is a, a con nice, continuous, pretty slice of the cosine function that gets everything flipped on its side. Tangent. Tangent is slope. We're talking about where do we go on the unit circle to get the, all the possible slopes, first and fourth. 
okay? So first and second would work, but look now at the graph of arctangent. The graph of arctangent, we want it to be a smooth, continuous curve with no interruptions. So we're just gonna go from negative pi over two to positive pi over two in the range, and that will get us a domain of all real numbers, from negative infinity to positive infinity, in one pretty continuous, smooth cycle. So that's why we picked first and fourth, okay? Now, arc cosecant. What is arc cosecant? Arc cosecant is the, in, is the reciprocal of arc sine. So we think about arc sine. Where did arc sine work? Arc sine worked in the first and fourth. That works here too. So you just, if you look at this graph that I've drawn up here, picture where the arc sine graph would go. It would be this S kind of thingy, uh, just going between those two black circles. It would be just connecting those, going through the origin in kind of an S-like sort of way. And we're just taking the reciprocal, making wings off of those, okay? Uh, arc secant is the flip of cosine. So we just take, and so you can see here again, if you just connect the black dots and you go through the point zero comma pi over two, then that'll get you, that, that's where the cosine graph would fit on this picture. And we're just making the little fly out wings version of that, just like when we graphed secant, okay? And then the weirdest one of all is our cotangent. Now we could have done the wings, the reciprocals of the arctangent graph, but that wouldn't have made a smooth, continuous uh, one wave, one nice continuous function without an asymptote down the middle. Here we have asymptotes at zero and pi, and we've got a smooth, continuous, uninterrupted function all the way down in between. Now, like I said, that was a massive, massive data dump, and now is the time to sort of wake up and just go, okay, that was a lot. Let me just write that all in one place for you instead of trying to get it frame by frame. So now you should wake up, put this in your notes. We've got our six arc trig functions. And I just noticed that arc cosecant doesn't have an equal sign between it and y. I have no idea. I grabbed it from the book. It's not my fault. Um, but you can see the range and the domain and then which quadrants they were in. So this is hopefully helping you see how this all fits together. If you want to get this in your notes, pause the video. I'm going to keep going because here is an even easier, prettier, nicer version of that. This is what I highly recommend dedicating brain space to. So that last slide with the table, yeah, that's good. You need to be able to have that kind of information. But this is the one that is the short, quick, super quick payoff. So you can see first and fourth are sine, tangent, and cosecant. And first and second are cosine, cotangent, and secant. This is the real super quick payoff here. If you just draw a semicircle this way and label it sine, tangent, cosecant, and then you draw a semicircle the other way and call it cosine, cotangent, secant, that is going to help you a lot more. So this is, this is the part to, to really dedicate brain space. I said, ooh, this is the part, notice, notice this one. Pause it here, say it to yourself, cover up the screen, draw it, get it in your notes. This one is, is the pay dirt. This is the one that really will help you over and over again. So that was horrible. That was nasty. Phew, glad that's all over. How does this actually help us solve any problems? How does this actually help us get things moving? So what could happen is you can be given a question that is actually really horrible looking, but you don't need the calculator, you don't need anything but a scrap of paper, and you can solve it real easy. So, can you say this one to yourself in English? Always try to come back to what is the meaning, what is going on, what is being said here, what is this stuff? So, pause the video, say this to yourself in English. Translate for me. What, is it, what does it say? What is tangent when sine is negative two-thirds, okay? What is tangent 
when sine is negative two thirds. Remember, normal sine is I give you an angle, you give me the sides of the triangle. Now, arc sine is I'm giving you the sides of the triangle, you tell me the angle. Okay, so we, we're, we're gonna, we've got, we've got the sides of the triangle, and then arc sine is going to turn that into some angle. And now we're gonna take that angle and we're gonna plug it into tangent. What does tangent do? Tangent, I should make that the process. Tangent comes back and gives you more sides of a triangle. It gives you the y over x. Well, what was sine giving you? Sokotoa. Sine was giving you so opposite, uh, which I, I'm mixing my figures here. It's giving you uh, y over r. It's giving you opposite over hypotenuse. I'll say that the other way as well. That's giving you opposite over hypotenuse. Same, same thing. And versus tangent, Sokotoa is giving you opposite over adjacent. So they're, they're giving you bits and pieces of the sides of the triangle, and then they're asking for just other sides of the triangle. But it's a triangle, so there are only three sides possible. So what I mean is, when you see it say arc sine, whoa, uh, when you see it say arc sine negative two thirds, and I forgot a negative up there, sorry about that. Uh, when you see it say arc sine negative two thirds, what's it telling you? It's telling you that we're on some kind of reference triangle down there in the fourth quadrant. This is where all that pay dirt comes off of the thing that I had the words spin around. Which one will give you, uh, which, which quadrant do you use when sine is negative? Well, sine was that semicircle off to the side. We use first and fourth. First, and, and the way you can always remember this for either semicircle is that first is always positive. So this is not the arc sine of a positive, this is the arc sine of a negative, so we must be in the fourth quadrant. Now sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so what must this adjacent side be? Well, we are, we are saying we've got a right triangle here where two squared plus x squared equals three squared, uh, that's four plus x squared equals nine, that's x squared equals five, it must be root five over here. Now, what about the negative? Think again about just regular old Cartesian analytic geometry. When we go to the left, that is negative, and when we go to the right, that is positive. When we go up, that's positive. When we go down, that's negative. So can this root five, can this root five be negative? No, we went to the right. The, what must be negative is down. This must be a negative two when we go down. So that if you look at this triangle and you say on this reference triangle, what is sine? It's negative two thirds. That makes sense. And what they're asking us is on that triangle, what is tangent? On that triangle, tangent is opposite over adjacent. It is opposite over adjacent. And we just like to clean that up a little bit. We want to multiply top and bottom by root five. So we'll get negative two root five over five. Arc sine is telling you, arc trig functions are telling you two sides of a right triangle. You can always use that information to find the other, the third side of a triangle. Tri right triangles are easy. Then I can ask you, well, tell me about two other sides of the triangle. Tell me about two other pieces. Well, tangent is asking for slightly different ones than this, but then this what sign is telling you. So you have to finish drawing the triangle. But all I'm ever doing is giving you two sides and asking for two sides. And it's it's very straightforward that way, okay? So now, next level, last level, we can take this up and we can do this without numbers. We can solve it for any triangle, any triangle X. So again, translate this one into English. What is it saying? It's saying, you tell me 
opposite over hypotenuse, but, and I'm telling you, cosine. What is cos? So, ka toa, adjacent over hypotenuse. I'm telling you, adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, you tell me, opposite over hypotenuse. So, how, how do we draw a triangle like that? So, the x is positive, so I'm just going to draw it in the first quadrant. How can I say you've told me adjacent over hypotenuse? What's x as a fraction? What's any whole number as a fraction? It's, it's easy just to turn it into over 1. Dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. So what I'm saying here is when I say arc cosine x, I'm telling you that the adjacent side is x and the opposite side, I mean the, the hypotenuse, is 1. We've got x right beside us and we've got one for a hypotenuse for a radius what must the other side be well whatever this side is over there it's it's we know this is a right triangle so things have to follow pythagoras so we can say that x squared plus whatever we're looking for squared equals one squared that's just the same as saying uh, what we're looking for squared is equal to one minus x squared but we want the root of that so we're going to say root 1 minus x. That's what must be going on over, oops, squared, over there. It must be root 1 minus x squared. So the arc trig function told us 2 thirds of a right triangle. We used our noggins to find the other uh, third of the right triangle. And now, and so all that was doing the middle part there. And now what is sine asking for? Sine is asking for opposite over hypotenuse. It's asking for that opposite side over the hypotenuse, which we didn't have to write the fraction. It is just that. If that didn't make sense, start the video over again. Maybe just watch from the halfway point your homework that you need to show up with for class. What I would like you to bring to demonstrate that you get this is that slide where the word spun around and made a full uh, rotation. So go back, find that slide, put that one in bold, bring that to class. That's what you need to bring to make sure that you're, you're tracking with what we're doing here. The words that sp the the graphic the where it spun around. What was the semicircles on that page? Bring that to class. Hope to see you in class. Hope this is all making sense, and we'll uh, do battle together, and we'll solve it, and I'll help you. See you in class.